Let's compare the two. What was the doggies like? Like, what was the vibe of the doggies before you left compared to what, yeah. you know, what, where the wires are at now? Yeah, obviously very uh, two different situations. Uh, when I was at the Bulldogs, we were going through um, a few tough years. Uh, we just lost our coach. He got sacked. Des has like the year I debuted, he got sacked. And then uh, we, uh, we had a new coach. We were going through a bit of change. And there wasn't any kind of, um, I guess, like any kind of balance there so it was it looked like it was a tough kind of three years that I had there and, you know we we kind of finished at the bottom end of the table every year and I wasn't playing my best footy but look it's like it's a great club and I love the club they gave me an opportunity I spent a lot of my junior time down there as well so I love the Bulldogs and it was like it was a tough time but it kind of um, I guess led me to the person I am today and where I am at the Warriors and like you said at the Warriors at the, at the minute you know where it's it's a great club, mate. It's just full of good people and people that want you to do better. So yeah, look, I'm enjoying my time so far here at the Warriors. Mate, we're enjoying watching you. It's been um, it's been awesome. Uh, great start to the year as well. I know, uh, you know, some things that we talked about in the past few weeks. Uh, we be, you know, he, he mentioned owning the moment. Um, you know, winning the moments throughout the game. I think, um, you know, winning the moments is something you do you do so well. How do you, especially as a winger, how do you kind of stay locked in or stay kind of in the moment to win those moments? Because we've seen it in other games. Um, you know, if I look at the Melbourne game, you know, you might have let the moment slip, you know, if you blow a try in the first half, um, only to pull mm. it back in the second half and, you know, win that moment. I think it's harder for the wingers especially, but how, how do you kind of stay in the zone and, and win these moments? Yeah, it's a great question. I think um, it's it's hard to explain, but I think you know, like the better you can move on from a mistake, and 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 the faster you can do that, will will allow you to stay present. And I think if you do that, like just helps you kind of stay stay in the moment, I guess. And like you said, the more you're present, the more you're present in that moment with every breath. It, it just helps you stay locked in, you know. And it just kind of gives you a cue on, you know, what's your next job. You know, you can't always be focusing on what's happened in the past or what's happened a minute before because, you know, you're too busy kind of moving forward with that. So um, I think for me, it's, and like you said, being on the wing, it's it's hard because you only get a few, I guess, a few moments in games to score tries or to be able mm. to put yourself in, in, in positions to score tries. But I think every involvement you have has to be a positive one. And that's, that's how I look at my game. And I think it starts with, you know, how I carry the ball. And like, that's how I dial my energy back down to that. So mm. every, if I feel like I'm doing that right, then I feel like I'm in the game. Yeah, it sounds like the mental uh, side of things, a massive part of that. Mars, what, what do you sort of do uh, mentally just, I guess, on game day to prepare? Are you, like, do you do meditation? Do you have a notebook that you carry around with you? How do you sort of get yourself in that zone? Yeah, yeah. I, I do a lot of breath work. I do meditation as well every day, so I meditate every morning. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, I journal. Like, everyone's different. I mean, like, I journal every day, so I write. I write in my journal every day, and then I have obviously my footy journal that uh, that I write in as well. But yeah, I just try to stay as calm as I can. Like already, I'm a I'm pretty like an upbeat person with a lot of energy, and I feel like that like that comes naturally to me. Where like to some other people it, it wouldn't. So that's that's a strength of mine. But at times I have to dial it back because sometimes that can be to my detriment. So I think at times for me it's about being a bit more calm and I guess just letting letting myself do my own job and not worrying about you know, like other boys doing their jobs. So I think for me, it's about being a bit more calm. But mm. yeah, I do I do get a lot out of um, meditation and stuff like that. I think it works a lot for myself. Mm. Jello mentioned, um, you know, good start to the year this year. It seemed like, uh, I guess, maybe towards the back end of, of last season, a lot of the attacks sort of going to that right edge to, to Dallin. Um, not saying that you didn't have work to do because you still had a lot to do, but a, a little bit more coming your way this year. Is that, what do you reckon that's that's down to? Is that a product of maybe Lukey doing a little bit more work out towards that left-hand side? You're getting a little bit more ball and a little bit more uh, try-scoring opportunity as well. Yeah, I think it's a bit of everything, uh, Sam. I think uh, with, with having Roger back in the centre and the left side as well, he's mm. it, obviously a massive attacking threat for us, like, the way he can move and and and, and the way he can create, um, I guess opportunities for uh, for the team. So I think that's a massive one. Um, but then also with Lukey, like you said, like he's you know like uh, like last night was real unfortunate for him. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think before that, mate, he was playing. He's been playing outstanding to start the season. So look, it's a tough one for Lukey. But look, he, I think, like you said, with him being out there and the way he the way he uses his speed in terms of. Um, like his acceleration to get us onto the ball. I mean, that's that's probably what gave us a bit more ball. But look, 
I mean, what's best for the team is, is, is what's best for the team. And like you said, last year with Shawnee out there, Dallin and Rocco, they were, man, like they were scoring some awesome tries. Um, but like you said, look, teams are going to come out and, and ID that, I reckon. So I think we have to kind of change up a bit. But in saying that, man, I'm, I'm all for the team. Mm. Have nice. you, just, just quickly, Jay, have you heard anything on Luke, mate? Is there any news coming out of, out of last night? Um, at the minute, nothing yet. Uh, we've got to head in today for some recovery, so I think we'll get a bit more uh, a bit more idea of what's going on with Lukey there. But it didn't look too good the way he got off the ground. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I hope he's doing okay. You know, like he's a great fella and, you know, he's he's had some tough injuries in the past, so I hope it's not too bad, mate. Yeah, no, worked really hard to get back last season, so mm. it just it sucked to see him jello go down like that last the, night. Um, you mentioned the situation there when you lost the doggies, uh, when you left the doggies, sorry. Would the situation change for you if the Warriors won the comp this year? Does the situation change where you say, okay, like my work here is done? You know, I've, I've ticked off the goal that I wanted to tick off. I've won a comp with the Waz. Like, time to look for something else. Like, what, yeah. what is your goals while you're here? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, bro. Like, if we, like, I always tell my wife this, but if we won the comp at the Warriors, like, I'd be happy enough to move on, to be honest. I mean, that's that's my, that, like, that's the ultimate goal for myself. And, hmm. I think the club deserves that, bro. Like, I think the club um, has been through a lot, like, especially in the last kind of four years with uh, with COVID. And when I signed with the Warriors, like, it was in the middle of that COVID situation. So, I, like, I came in in the second year and I and I kind of seen, that, like, the toll it took on the families um, and especially some of the Islander boys that really struggled to uh, to be away from home, man. Mm. It, it's, like, that was tough. And, 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 you know, like, just what Robbo's done, what Cam's done, you know, to like to hold the club together, like, bro. Like how many players have come and gone? Um, mm. I mean, like the club deserves a premiership, bro. And that's like that's honestly the only reason why I wake up every morning to work to work hard. Like I really want that for the club. And yeah, look, whatever happens beyond that, yeah, that's that's for another day to think about. But man, like if we uh, uh, like where to win the comp, man, I'll be happy to move on and and free up some space for another young fella coming through. <laughs> Oh, nice man. Have you have you been approached by any uh, over your career, Mars? Any AFL clubs, mate? Just thinking about how high you were able to get last night with that catch on the wing. Have you ever considered a move to the AFL once you finish rugby league? Nah, not really. Not really, Sam. <laughs> mate, like just watching how they, uh, um, like how those guys play. It's bro, and like how much how much running they do. At oh training. yeah, they do a lot of running. It, oh, mate, they do a lot of running, and it's just a different kind of like you know, it's a different kind of body like the way they do it week in week out like bro like week in week out what they do man like i admire what they do like what they put their bodies through like it's literally like they're jumping without even you know like they're jumping higher than what we do and it's just bro it's just scary like they're getting tackled in the air so there's no way i'm going afl <laughs> still still <laughs> mate still a remarkable try that you're able to score yesterday and uh yeah. from from the left boot of uh of chanel harris to vita boy didn't he do a good job man coming into you know probably unexpected uh coming in pretty early on to take over from uh from luke but uh man he, he had a great game as well oh mate like just like i said i mean we've got players in the team that just come in and do a job and I think Chanel is a perfect example. Like he, like I've played a lot of footy with Chanel, and like, mate, like his toughness, like I, like he's, like he's probably one of the halves I've played with that's not scared to get his body in front and to actually, like he, like he gives it to forwards. Like when forwards run at him, like he absolutely bends them backwards. So like he's, that's what I appreciate about his game the most. But I think what he did awesome last night was just his calmness. Like he came on, he did his job well. Like he, like he kicked well for us, scored that awesome try as well. So so happy for Chanel to come in and be able to play a game like that because he deserves it. Hey, Mars, I was, um, I was saying the other day, uh, I was talking to Rocco, and I said, uh, you know, sometimes you come up against, you know, really, really tough opponents and it kind of brings the best out of you. For you as a winger, who's like the person that you see opposite you that brings the best out of you? Who's mm. the toughest, the toughest opponent, the toughest winger to go against in the comp, you reckon? Um, that's a great question because I haven't really thought about it. Um, for me, it's more so about versing... <laughs> Like versing teams that are at the top, and and you know what I mean. So for example, like last year we versed Penrith round ten, and and I mean like versing teams that are at their best. So when their players like when no one's out, you know when they've got their full squad on on deck and they're playing their best uh, best thirteen. I think for me that's what it's more about. I mean mm. like being able to try win games like that, and you know I guess showing up to games and knowing that you know they've got their best. Like we want to be able to come to games and know that. Teams are putting their best out there, and we're and we're beating them. You know, like it's not about oh, like checking the 
checking the lineup of the day and seeing that they're missing, you know, like, uh, like say for example, or, or like they're missing the clearing. Oh yes, he's like he's not playing today. It's good for us. Nah, I want to be versing teams that are at their best and and us being able to put good performances in and us being able to get those two points when we're versing teams that are at their best. I think that's gonna for me. That's what drives me. Like knowing that we're a team that are able to do that week in week out. So I think that's gonna be the challenge because I mean, like as you've seen the start of the season at the moment. Every team's been playing good footy. Like last week, you've seen Tigers beat the Sharks. You know, it's Canberra started really well as well. So you look, it's it's, it's going to be a tough, tough competition. So that's what kind of gets me going. Yeah, mm. yeah, because it's a tough one. Because how how do you get yourself up when you're not up against a good team? Like you look at the Seagulls got getting beat by the Dragons. Um, you know, some real upsets across the league. How do you get yourself up when it's not a big game or it's not a big team that you're up against? I think it's important to just focus on your processes and systems as a team. I mean, you, you can't really, I guess, bring your performance down to a, to a team that's probably not are performing at their best. But it's always easy to do that because it's mm. always an easy way to opt out, you know. But I think um, as 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 a team, if you want to be up there in the top four again, or if you want to be playing good footy, you know, and and challenging the top teams, you've got to be able to play your best footy even when it's not expected. So I think that's. For us, that's just that concentration and that detail focus. So, yeah. Mm, it, you mentioned it just before. Um, most like a good, a strong start to twenty twenty four for for almost all the teams. Does it feel like the comps are a lot closer this year over the last couple of years? Obviously, Penrith by and far the, the best team, and last year it sort of became a two horse race with the Broncos. Does it feel like twenty twenty four? It's it's a really even comp, mate, for sure. And and and, and like especially how the Roosters have started. I mean. Normally they're like the kind of team that take a few games to kind of mm. get into the competition, but mate, they come out of the blocks and you know like they last week that game against Penrith I was watching it was a tough game like they was it was like it was it was tit and tat and they were just going set for set, but like I said, the Penrith didn't have their full squad out there and they were able to get the job done. So that's another kind of I guess opportunity for us as well. You know we haven't been we probably haven't had our our best team out there in terms of having all the boys ready for selection. But, you know, we've we fought hard, but we still miss those two kind of first games. So I think for us, that's what we want to get better at. You know, when we haven't got our full squad, we've got to make sure we're able to go out there and still play the foot we want with the boys that are coming in. So, yeah, like you said, the competition is getting is, is getting tougher. And this year I can see how close it is. Mm. Hey, um, there's two teams here that we haven't played this year. But they're playing this afternoon. Who's your pick, Eels Tigers? Who do you think gets up in that one? Um, I want to say, I want to say the Tigers. Eh? I mean, they looks like they're playing with a bit of confidence, and Benji has them going. I mean, last week uh, to beat Sharks like that, and Sharks are a great team. Like they're no slouch. So for them to beat Sharks last week, I think they get a bit of confidence out of that. I know the Eels are missing Moses as well, so he's massive for them. Like Moses is a big, big. Uh, big play for the Eels so I think with him not there the Eels are still a great team but I just think you know with what the Tigers have done last week um, and, and, and they got a bit of confidence I'm pretty sure two years ago they kicked the field goal to win it there on Easter Monday so mm. look yeah I'm back in the I'm back in the Tigers but yeah I wouldn't put it past the Eels to bring it home Know your, know your rugby league history as well, Marcelo. Very impressive, mate. Before we let you go, um, <clears throat> what are you doing outside of rugby league to uh, to sort of take your mind away from the game and just relax a little bit? We we know uh, Anthony Gelling's a big reader now. He's been reading the same book for two years. Uh, what do you do off the field? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do off the field to unwind? Yeah, nah, same same with I, I love reading. Eh? I'm I'm a big reader. Um, I've just had this new course as well. Uh, this this cert for and well being. So I've just started that course. So nice. um, yeah, I'm pretty busy at the minute with stuff outside of footy as well. But bro, like I do enjoy reading. Uh, like I kind of read every day. So yeah, it, it just kind of gets my so I'm mind away from footy and helps me stay a bit more present. What do you, what sort of stuff are you reading? Are you into your fiction? Are you more of your you know your your non-fiction type yeah. stuff? I'm more my kind of autobiographies. Yeah, um, nice. And like all, like all sports, I just finished um, finished Andre Agassi. I thought that was an awesome book. Nice. Um, and then I just uh, like I just finished recently this book called The Mountain Is You. Um, I forgot I forgot the lady's name, but that was an awesome read. I would recommend it. So yeah, I've read a few. I've read uh, Atomic Habits as well. That's a good read. So yeah, I just like to I guess books that help help you kind of learn a bit more about um, the mental side of things and 
I guess how to just create good habits. Could you recommend Orphan X to him, Jello? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the one he's been reading for two years. So we're we're waiting for the book review, but he hasn't made it past page one. So oh, the movie's probably the <laughs> movie will be made the, by the time it, I finish the book. You watch the movie and say you've read it. Um, I recommend another one. I recommend another one to you, Mas. I read um. T- uh, yeah. Eleven Rings. That's uh, the Phil Jackson. Oh, book. I read that. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, that's, that's unreal. Oh, that's a fantastic that's read, Jello. Because obviously, Last Dance was was massive a couple of years ago, and that mm. came out, and I watched it, yeah. and all I wanted to do was hear more from Phil Jackson. So I went and bought his book. Incredible. Oh, mate, Absolutely incredible. Yeah. He's a freak. Oh, and when He's you look at the and when you look at the achievement, like three three peats, and he nearly three, made it. Three. Yeah. Bro, it's unbelievable. It's yeah. unbelievable. And the way he went about his business, see how like he was just so calm and zen, and he got the players like he got the. Born it back then in the nineties, like like he was, like bro, like he had them meditating back then, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What was going on, bro? He had the shoes you off. I mean? He had the shoes off. You know, earthing, shoes off, earthing at bro. training. <laughs> yeah, it's Mate, freakish, man. It actually, freakish. I was gonna, I was gonna let you go on that question, but it sort of, it, it makes me think of of um of Webby, and I'm not suggesting that that Webby's got you um taking your shoes off as you walk into Mount Smart, but <laughs> but but what what is Webby like? Do you hear so much from all the players about just you know how um I guess supportive and encouraging he is of the players, but you know is is there an edge to yeah. Webby as well? Like is there times where you know he's able to 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 deliver something that's a little bit hard hitting? Maybe I'm not saying Craig Bellamy level, but a, you know a little bit of a spray yeah. if need be. Just give us a little bit of insight into what Webby sort of offers. No, no, I think, like you just said, like, um, like reading that Phil Jackson book, man, very similar traits to Phil Jackson, actually. Like, very calm, very measured with his message. Um, I think I think being a coach, I think you have to be able to deliver a message, be precise, and also have a bit of oomph in the back of it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be able to deliver a message with, you know, with a bit of fire in it, but at the same time being calm and not kind of overstepping. Bro. And, and, like, Webby, man, like, he does that. I don't know, like, he does it so easy. Like, he makes it look easy as a coach, the way, like, he delivers a message and what he wants. But, yeah, like, from the coaching side of things, I think he's very, like, has very similar traits to Phil Jackson in terms of how calm he is. He, like, he like he trusts and believes in his system so much. Like, he just believes in it so much that it makes you want to go out there and play for him. Um, and just the person he is, he cares genuinely about the individual, the player. He's not just there, to, like, for footy. He cares about you, he cares about your family. So... Mm. Yeah, he's just a great follow, man. Just needs the 11 rings and then... Uh... <laughs> literally, literally. We'll start working on the rings. We'll start working on the rings. <laughs> hey, um, hey Mars, before we let you go, mate, we know you got a, we know you got a bit of a recovery day today. Just what, what does that entail yeah. exactly, um, you know, day after a game? What, what, what do you guys got in store yeah. today? Yeah, so normally day after a game, if it was a long turnaround, we wouldn't be going in today, but because we've got the, sh- uh, the short turnaround into, into Saturday next week, we... We'll go in today, see physios if you need to, and then we head off to the pools for a swim stretch and then back in to Mount Smart. I think we might be jumping on the bikes and then just uh, just taking the legs over and then we got a uh, review. So, yeah, I smacked that out today and then I start prepping for Souths, man. Oh, nice, but Well, it should be a good review. Plenty to smile about there, mate. Thanks, uh, thanks heaps for your time. Yeah. Really appreciate you jumping on. And all the nah, best thanks, for Saturday. Bob, I really appreciate it. No, thanks, Jello. Thanks, Sam. I really appreciate you guys having me on the show. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Marcelo. Cheers, there you go, Catch Marcelo you Montoya, uh, joining us there. Uh, fresh off the win, 20 points to 12 against the Newcastle Knights at Gomedia Stadium Mount Smart yesterday, uh, getting another two points to the Warriors, going 2-2 two and two on the season, just outside the top eight now in ninth position. Um, but hopefully uh, after a win next week against Souths, they find themselves uh, firmly in that top eight. What a lovely guy he is as well. He is uh, the best, man. Yeah. He is the best. Yeah, lovely guy. Love Always. that guy. It's the NZ. It's Kiwi for Sport.